gentlemen, welcome back to the show. It's good to have you here. Um, we just have to start with the hilarity that is uh, yesterday. I mean, I just can't get around how wild these people are. Like, I've dug a little bit deeper, and this character is so funny. Now, I understand that she's not complete. You know, she wasn't, I, don't, I doubt she was the hacker that, that really pulled us off. And she, but she's getting all the media attention because of her funny antics. I mean, really, really funny antics. Like, absolutely hilarious. Um, but I think, um, I think it's just, like, it's, and obviously the dude is the main guy behind this, but, like, I can see, like, when, when money becomes no issue at all, you kind of, you go a little wild. And maybe this is the indicator of going wild, right? Maybe this is, maybe this is what it is. Um, but, like, I think this, this article does it pretty well. Like, if you have, like, this, this, uh, this tweet. Imagine sitting on $4 billion in stolen Bitcoin, knowing you're being hunted by nation states and deciding that NYC is a smart place to hold up. That's wild. If I had stolen $4 billion of Bitcoin in 2016, I would certainly not be anywhere in North America or anywhere where, you know, extraditions are possible. I would definitely be in like Algeria or like somewhere in Africa, uh, maybe some parts of Asia, like China, possibly. I would stay away from these sort of places, and I would definitely do a better job of cleaning my dollars, my, my Bitcoin. I de would definitely do a better job of cleaning my Bitcoin. I would have changed that into Monero ASAP, like really, really fast, and you know, kept most of it in Monero. Uh, it would be absurd to do anything otherwise. I, I don't know what these people were thinking, but I can, like, you know, there's a, the, the dude, the guy in this, this dude was a YC graduate. And I can see that, um, yeah, exactly. Bitfinex hackers, LOL, sure. So, like, this, it, it may be that he was the hacker. And I don't know the details of the hack. Like, it could have been as simple as what we saw over that bridge that happened a couple days ago on that Ethereum Solana bridge. But if it's not, then I don't know. Maybe it's a team. Maybe this, these are fall people. Who knows? Uh, but, <laughs> like, Bitcoin always draws the funniest people, including I and everyone else included in this in this space. Um, but, you know, this might be why Bitcoin is considered such a strange thing. Like it's, I don't know. Like, maybe when you have that much Bitcoin, you just don't, you know, it's not, it's not like, uh, you don't own it, right? Like, you know you don't own it, and there's like a guilt complex associated with all these things, and you kind of just like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Like, you don't, you have a guilt complex associated. So you're willing to store your, um, you know, your, uh, your private keys on your email, because just, it doesn't mean anything to you, right? You're just like, yeah, it's here, but like, it's not mine. I didn't earn it. And it's like, one of the situations, I don't know, like when, you know, it's complicated when you have this, this level of, um, there must be guilt associated, of course. It's, I can, I can imagine. Anywho, anywho, this is irrelevant. Uh, but here's something that's relevant. Apple is introducing, uh, and you've probably seen this. Now you can use your iPhone to, to tap to pay just your iPhone. Now, of course the merch needs to have some, a uh, back end, like a, a I, I think they're starting with Stripe, but Stripe, I think is crypto friendly. And if they're not, like, as they introduce new formats, you'll be allowed to use things like, and I was just reading the article, like, I know Ledger has a credit card. I know Visa has a crypto credit card. And a couple other have crypto. Binance, I think, has a crypto credit card. So this means that you could technically transact with these things, right? These these platforms right to your device. Unless Apple makes a solid stance against this. They're like, no, we will not allow crypto transactions specifically. You could use crypto to transact, which is very, very interesting. Like this is this is, this could be pretty interesting. Like you could have a lot more people accepting crypto. Um, see, Cash App now allows Lightning Network, uh, so that's that's some pretty interesting news. Uh, buy tacos, tip your favorite Twitter comedian, or send your funny mode anywhere that accepts Lightning. So that's pretty dope. So we're seeing adoption. I would, by the way, doubt heavily if Bitcoin is you know, way more than what it is now. Like, I'd be shocked now. Like, I'd be flabbergasted if Bitcoin wasn't, like, a lot more common in, like, 10 years. Like, significantly more common. The Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these things. I mean, well, not to use as a, 
Um, wow, look, it's KKR leads 250 million raise for crypto custody bank Anchorage. Wow, very interesting. Um, KKR is huge. Uh, yeah, so like, I would be surprised if crypto, crypto, not Bitcoin, because I think Bitcoin is, it's not a transaction layer, right? Crypto is not a transaction layer. I think what we're talking about is um, crypto is a store of value or hedge against inflation. That's what it is. That and Ethereum is like TCP IP, right? It's like, it's a, it's a utility more than anything. I don't think people trans, I, I don't think people should transact with it. Uh, like if you're transacting, I would buy like Solana or something. Sorry. Uh, the, and by Solana or like one of those platforms to do transactions on or maybe not yeah maybe like maybe something like Solana I'm not sure but I certainly wouldn't use my Bitcoin or ETH to do it so that's interesting uh, but this is exciting news uh, and this may be the next step for Apple accepting it directly or something like that and the last thing I'd like to cover is Russia this is the exact article that came out uh, Russia is uh, regulating uh, crypto basically right so it is not a default it's not a secondary currency like it's not it's not rubles and bitcoin or crypto is accepted it's like it, there's rubles which is a local currency and then crypto is like an accepted foreign currency right and that's really exciting and and there's let's talk about it's really exciting but let's really talk about why this might be happening because russia is extremely strategic i feel like the states are not as much um, because states have much less to lose. But I think some of the reason they may be doing this is every time Russia tries to pay for oil, like gas, energy, basically, with uh, anything aside from U.S. dollars, they face sanctions and problems. Bitcoin could be a great intermediary for this, right? It could be a wonderful intermediary. And they, they have to play this game strategically, especially against the states of China, because, like... Russia is not China's greatest friend, but it, it is friend by default. Like my friend's enemy, my enemy's enemy is uh, my friend. So like Russia and China, I don't know if they're great friends, but you know, I've seen them come together a couple times. Like they just had a meeting together, but it's clear that China's enemy is definitely the U.S. And uh, the U.S. is not also very friendly with Russia. So we get China and Russia coming together. And I know China has the no to Bitcoin, but I think that was a foolish move. And I think what Russia is doing is probably the right way to go, like legalizing this and regulating it and allowing for it within the borders and like mining it is probably very, very intelligent. And I think it's very intelligent for a, a whole multitude of reasons, um, but definitely independence from the US dollar, right? If you can transact and settle in something aside from US dollar, then you don't need to be selling something to get US dollars. Right, you can just convert your currency into US into Bitcoin, and there you go. You're ready to go. You're ready to roll. If you start mining it, there you go. You're better off even better, even more. Um, so I, I think it's a strategic move. I think it's a very intelligent move. Now let's see what the states does because the states have news coming out very soon, and that's going to impact what happens to Bitcoin. Um, so let us see. Let's see what happens. Also, um, yeah, I mean. I have more theories on this, but I, I don't know if I should be sharing this on the platform, to be honest. Yeah, uh, let's, let's look at the markets. So resistance, we haven't broken past the resistance. We've come back down a little bit. Um, we talked about the resistance yesterday. And it's quite a bit right here. Uh, and let's see what happens. Let's, let's see how we do. I, I don't know, because the, what's actually really interesting is this, the bull market support band is now what's really interesting. And if we make it through, if we have enough trajectory to make it through, then we're off to a bull run. If we can't push through, and we discussed this briefly yesterday, if we kind of hit and come down, or if we, you know, go in and then come up and then come come in, we're going back down. Like, and then the question is, or do we have to retest the bottom here, right, and go up, or do we need to go from here, this, and then come down to something more re like a thirty k, and then come up? I don't know. These are interesting questions. I. Interesting questions, that's what they are. So we'll have to wait and see. The DCA is still happening, and I think what's going to happen tomorrow is there's going to be a whole bunch of cash, four days worth of uh, thing showing up. It still hasn't done what it's supposed to do. It's loading, but um, I don't really have very many updates aside from this. But um, I will see you tomorrow.
Have a wonderful day.